In chapter two, we begin to look at the alphabet in practice and apply it to a text, which is what Dobson likes to do from the very start. So you get used to seeing unadapted text right from the start of the book. The general points he wants to raise are pretty straightforward. First of all, he takes you through the basic alphabet, and that's what you'll have found on a previous page in Canvas. He then, under section 2.2, .2, talks to you about diphthongs. We're going to cover these by thinking about a vowel triangle with the alpha at the bottom in class. It might not be a concept you've thought about before, but it helps explain how the Greek vowels work as they do. He also has a note about Yesus, which he which he spells out yeah sus you're not going to want to do that kind of transliteration very often but it does raise a good point over things like an initial iota isn't really a vowel it's a semi vowel and as such it can be the kind of glide that you need to be y that starts off a word and acts as a consonant as well as a vowel You'll often find some of these quirks creep in when you're trying to get words from other languages into Greek. Under section 2.3, he deals with gamma before a range of other letters, gamma, kappa and chi. In this case, you're going to want to nasalise things, so you get ng or unk or ng or however you want to spell it. The important point is things like this word, as he writes, is going to be pronounced angelos, not agelos. Think about the English word angel and that should be fairly obvious. Under 2.4, he then gives you the opening of John. One important point he raises there is the iota subscript. This is a Byzantine convention, as I wrote in my previous notes. You'll find it ad script in some texts. This means that it's at the end of a word. So instead of seeing arche written like that, you'd see it with the iota at the end. This becomes really annoying to read because actually in some cases that obscures what the ending is and it's also just a bit confusing when you're used to seeing it as a subscript. So I hate them, um, but unfortunately the text of my favourite author Sophocles uses them in the Oxford Classical Text, so I have to read them all the time. I then want to have a quick look at the passage that he talks to you about in this section because it raises a lot of really useful points. First of all, let's work through it word by word. In, beginning, was, the, word, and, the, word, was, towards, the, God, and, God, was the word. Purely looking at the words, you'll see that not all of them have accents. So that words like N and HO don't have accents. Not every word in Greek has an accent and some words only gain accents in some circumstances. You'll notice if you're interested in accents that KAI and THEOS, words where the accent was at the end of the word. Um, the accent often moves from being an acute to a grave, and that's because of the way final acute accents work. You might also notice the importance of breathings if you look at things carefully. In this text, you have N and N. Vowel length matters. N means in, N means was. Straight after this passage, you then get hen. This means one. There is also a word hen, which means which. 
So beginning to read the opening of John is a great example of how both vowel length and breathings matter in Greek. And these are often something that people struggle with when they're learning Greek. So it's an encouragement to you right at this early stage, please pay attention to both of those. Accents are not something to worry about right now. You don't need to worry about writing them. Breathings and vowel lengths are absolutely critical. Thinking about the vocab itself and translating this passage, you'll notice a few things. First of all, there's no the in beginning. Greek uses its article differently to the way English does. And when you're talking about something relatively generic like that, the original beginning, you don't need it. You might notice that the word God appears twice and once it has a the and the second time it doesn't. This is because in the first case it's following a preposition. So it's in a phrase where having an article to define it is important. These are words that where there is only one of them are called monadic nouns. Something like 80% of the time they are with an article where you wouldn't use one in English. This is one of the 20% where you haven't got one. And this is because if you look at the word order and God was the word is not what we would say. We would say the word was God. That is how this passage is interpreted. And we use the article to help us deal with that. The true subject of this sentence is the one with the article. And you'll learn more about articles and word order as we go along. But the true subject of the sentence is the one with the article. And therefore, God cannot have an article. Otherwise, it would be God was the word and not the word was God. You'll notice that this is typically written with a small th, small theta for God, where we put in a capital G. Given that Greek is polytheistic, one of the challenges it has is representing a monotheistic culture. So you will find that little things like this show up where trying to shoehorn Christianity into a polytheistic pagan linguistic framework is not always easy. The other really obvious issue is with pros. If you look this up in a translation, you're going to see with what relationships are with God is always going to be a matter for discussion. Prepositions are one of the hardest things to deal with in the New Testament because they're about relationships and trying to model relationships in a new religion is going to be really difficult, particularly as a response to any Old Testament idea about our relationship with God. So you will develop your own understanding of how pros is used and what kind of relationship that might involve. And I've just given to you right now as a very straightforward towards, because if you look it up in the vocab list, you're going to see it says to or towards. And that's your starting point to then start understanding what is going on.